This is a clip from the Red Cow Arcade podcast. Well, Hawkeye? Yeah, Hawkeye's great. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I I mean, especially with the Christmas season coming, I I love the Christmas in New York stuff. Gives me the Home Alone 2 vibes. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. Gotcha. Ha- Hawkeye's so, a much better Home Alone remake. Yeah, it's well, the a very strong start, much lo- which, you know, much like Loki had a strong start. So uh, that doesn't say anything, but yeah, they at true. least they have very good premises for all these <laughs> shows. Yeah, they, they, they tend to earn <laughs> their own place. Like and, and now that I've seen a couple of new new movies like Shang-Chi, it was good. And Internals is good. But yeah, I'm actually like, I'm enjoying the streaming experience more. I'm enjoying yeah. the, because otherwise you you can't possibly have a scene where Hawkeye goes to a LARPing tournament. Oh, oh my gosh. That's so fun. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, that, that's what I like about this one is it's, it does that line where between serious and yeah, so especially for like, a, it's like, says it feels like a Christmas movie in that way where there's like serious moments and then fun moments. And then like, you know, kind of thoughtful moments uh my like one of my favorite parts is when he like during the the steve rogers musical he goes into the bathroom and it says like thanos is thanos was right on his uh on the urinal and he gives a michael keaton face like hmm, maybe <laughs> like yeah i don't know i'll, I don't know. Like, I'll I just, take it under consideration <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, especially everything he's gone through you know and uh you, you think about it like right after his you know friend uh you know uh, yeah, Nat. Scarlett yeah. Johansson. <laughs> that, uh, the C- the Steve Rogers musical was brilliant too. I mean, very well realized. And yeah, the LARPing thing was genius. It's just nice to Jer- Jeremy Renner is an is a you know an A lister actor. He was nominated. I think I don't think he won for the Hurt Locker, but he he, he may he may have. No, I don't. Think he may he have. Uh, but he was nominated. He's an he's incredible nominated. actor. He's in the town. He's brilliant in the town. Um, he's really good and, but he's always, he, he been carries a, like a sadness with him, which is so yes. great. Like he, and like this bird and like, he's accidentally became an Avenger and he doesn't want it. <laughs> he's like, and he, he was really on the brink of being canceled there, like way too close to comfort for a few. And it seems that we're, we've, they've gotten this show off the ground without him getting canceled. They've, yeah. they've stuck the landing. Yeah. I've, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't know anything about his, his background, but I did think i heard some vague cancellation something about th- threat threats something about a spouse or something I, don't, I really don't know but i don't know but I'm, I'm glad to see that uh that the show can be released and not be like about something else um yeah. i'm just he's, here he's i'm just really here for the entertainment please and i i like the kate bishop character you, you must have seen true grit the um yeah yeah oh yeah the 2010 one yeah. coen brothers movie yeah um it's just it's one of my favorite movies i i think it, and she may be the top reason why it's such a good film. It's, I mean, it's re- like her dialogue, her performance, her confidence in that role. She, I really think that that, that actress is something special. Like I really, really do. Yeah. Uh, she actually, she was in, um, what was it? Like the sixth transformers movie. It was called a uh, bumblebee and, <laughs> Oh yeah. It, Bumblebee's good. It was like a total divergence from the Michael Bay mayhem of, you know, the Bay, the mayhem of, uh, of, of it all. It's like, I didn't, I didn't care about, transform i saw the first one and i checked out and then when bumblebee came out i saw it on a plane i was like this was so good i shouldn't have seen this on a plane <laughs> yeah it was, it was really strong um so yeah hawkeye I'll, I'll be watching with interest um i'm i'm excited you know once again much like wandavision it was it's when they announced like and there's gonna be a hawkeye show i was like okay am i gonna have to watch that for homework or something or like kind of dreading it and now yeah, it'll be the especially highlight yeah. When you give Jeremy Renner time to shine, I like the the concept of a hawk, the Hawkeye, because he's just the dude who can shoot arrows real good. And yeah. I've always liked that kind of Batman esque, like it could be you kind of guy. Yeah. Um, and so, and then you have this mentorship aspect, which is a really in a really strong chemistry between them. So I think I, I'm I'm optimistic, and uh, so we'll see how it goes. A lot of these shows are about setting up like the new Captain America, the new Hawkeye, the new Iron Man with Iron Heart. They're all going to be like these torch passing things. And um, but I don't feel like this is a bait and switch. I feel like it's a good story about about Hawkeye and his legacy. Um, so hope, and not to mention, like if, if, if I have to take a new Hawkeye, um, I'm happy to take her. I think she's awesome. 
And there, there's a couple of things it does that I like too. Like just it, I feel like I'm not being insulted while watching this. <laughs> and so, like yeah. you know, like when he's like talking to his wife and his wife is in on everything. I love that. Like that's such like a trope where it would be like, oh, he's hiding all this from her, yes. and it would be this huge thing. But she's like, no, she's in on it. She's like, oh, okay, so you're trying to like get the Ronin costume and clean this up. Okay, well, uh, we're <laughs> we'll be making gingerbread houses. Try to be back in five days. You know, it's just yeah. it's it's a more it feels more like a real relationship, which I like. They can even be kind of upfront with the kids about it too. Yeah, no, so, it's great. It's great, and I like the, all of his kid actors are good too. Like, <laughs> yeah. They were all strong. They were all yeah. like, uh, they're very believable. I think these Marvel TV shows, man. Yeah, I, I thought Loki was quite bad at, at the end of the day. At the end of the day. I thought it was a great premise. Uh, some interesting stuff at the end with Kang, but the middle was awful. Um, I thought Falcon and Winter Soldier had enough going for it to not write it off. Like, yeah. Between Zemo and her, it's it's it had it yeah. had enough going for it. Had, it. it had I think it suffered from editing out like a big virus plot. Yeah, uh, which I think was to his detriment. And then WandaVision is moi, like except for all the crap we've already talked yeah. about. But it's it, most of it is very 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 good. And I was thinking, and... like, why do I like Hawkeye and WandaVision? And it's like they're both similar. It's like dealing with trauma <laughs> like yeah because when the best i mean that scene in the most recent episode where uh you know clint is talking to kate about his it's like when he's talking about his trauma like how he's you know get well all of these shows are about mental health <laughs> the, uh, yeah wandavision is is about grief falcon and winter soldier is about ptsd and guilt and in the case of falcon you know it's obviously about discrimination and yeah, uh, uh, and being thinking if you're actually, you know, ready for the role or ready for being captain. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's imposter syndrome yeah, stuff. So. Yeah, and then Loki is all about you know uh, narcissism um, and self absorption, and now this is about yeah, this is about trauma and about uh, uh yeah. And uh, there, but there are so many good scenes, like, or it's all one scene where he's talking about like he's. He's just like a weapon. Uh, Clint is talking about his weapon, but he was just like pointed at the. He was pointed by the right people at the right, right things. Yeah, that's cool. And it's really interesting. And then like when all those people went away during the blip, it's like, what do you, what do you do? <laughs> like, what, where am I going to be pointed to? Do you ever think? Do you ever like stop while while you're watching it? And you're like, I'm watching this kind of, you know, mid budget television or you know, mid to high budget television series starring Hawkeye and the true grit girl and you pause and you're like, this is a sequel to a 2012, $200 million movie. Uh, this is funny to me. Like the, 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 they're in the audience's mind. Those two, that movie and the, this show are very linked, mm. but like they, they are separated by quite a bit. I mean, first of all, they're separated by like nine years. Yeah. And, and, uh, and two, like they're, they're not, they don't really match in style and tone. Yeah, you know, that's one of the coolest things about Marvel is that you have se essentially sequels to things that that don't resemble one another. Yeah, and like Hawkeye as a character hasn't ever been given the space to do what he's doing now, and Jeremy Renner, who's a Oscar caliber actor, is yeah. able to actually do this within a Marvel property. You know, do that. Yeah, range. It, it gives the it gives the character. I don't know if they're going to retire the character or what, but it certainly like casts much like it did for Wanda actually it if it, like if I ever go back and watch Age of Ultron yeah I'm going to enjoy it more because Wanda and Hawkeye are better developed in future shows yeah it, it, it's so funny yeah because if you're like if you saw Age of Ultron you're like okay next we're doing a Hawkeye thing <laughs> next we're yeah, doing a Wanda care. thing you'd be like fuck off <laughs> I was. That's why we were. Me and Zach Maxwell were laughing because I was like, I can't. Now that the, now that the unexpected shows are good, I can't just write them off. <laughs> it's like yeah. I don't know what's going to be good. I thought Loki was going to be pretty good. It wasn't. Yeah. So you. I thought that would be the best. If you had asked me 
what will be, you know, rank what you think the quality of these four shows would be. I would have gotten it perfectly wrong. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, but I've always liked Hawkeye as a concept because I like the whole Batman, the Batman, the Batman, Batman kind of thing. thing, you know, where it's like, it's a yeah. normal guy hanging around superheroes. He can do a couple things. Well, maybe he's rich. Maybe he has a, he's really good shooting a bow. I don't care. It's cool. <laughs> It's cool that you could yeah, and, and, look up to that person and maybe you could realize it. I like that. And um, that's kind of built into the show, too, because that's what Kate's doing. She's looking up to this guy right. who was fighting against insurmountable odds. And she is t- trying to take up that mant- mantle. And it's a good metaphor, too, for like, when, when am I ever going to be able to to be with my family? Like, when am I going to stop working? When am I going to stop being at work all the time? Uh, which, it, it, you know, kind of echoes like with Falcon. Um, in, in his case, it was like, Hey, I'm a superhero, but I'm broke. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I can't, uh, I can't make a living off of this. And this is kind of like, I can't, I, the, you know, my line of work is, uh, is in the way of what I care about. And end game positions, Hawkeye Clint in a really cool place, which is, he lost everything for five years and now he has it back. And what does his life look like now that he has everybody back? That shouldn't he have a new lease on life? And, and, and I think he recognizes, like I probably should have a new lease on life. And yet I'm kind of like back in the stupid thick of things, shooting stupid arrows. And I don't want to be shooting stupid arrows anymore. And before he saved his family, he really, really was committed to the idea of sacrificing his own life. But now he's the one who survived. And I think he feels like he, it definitely should have been Natasha that lived in him, him who's dead. So he, I think he also feels like he's on borrowed time. Like he's like, I'm, I'm not the one who should be here. And it's kind of cool to watch a show about a guy who's like, I don't think I should be here. Yeah. And Jeremy Renner plays it so well. Cause he's, yeah. he's, you know, hurt locker shit. And he's got that tortured soldier affect to him. Yeah. And um, and he brings it all to the table, and he he, he doesn't phone it in. He's he's acting. He's acting his butt yep. off, and it's great to see that. Now would be a good time to round out Hawkeye. You've seen the last episode, I assume. Yes, yes. And our friends on Discord were a little disappointed by the use of King. The, the, I suppose the non-use of Kingpin. They set him up. They don't do anything with him. They don't really explain his significance to the story, and then they. Uh, uh, imply that he's killed, but we all know, like, you wouldn't just dispense with Kingpin in a single episode of a show. Yeah. So, if it, it, I agree that it does feel kind of like, what are we doing here? I, I, I didn't really feel, it, but I, I think I'm tainted because I know a little bit about Echo, the the the, the uh, Maya, her character. I know that she has, mm. she's an adoptive daughter of Kingpin, and she shoots. Kingpin in the face in the comics, and he survives in the comics. He goes so blind I, or something. Um, yeah, so it's uh, spoilers <laughs> for potential plot lines they may use. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I kind of have been spoiled by that kind of knowledge, but uh, I, I liked it a lot. I yeah, I don't know. I, I, have, I have really no qualms. The whole series was great. I thought it wrapped up a really good story. I liked that it was the Hawkeye season was fairly lower stakes than what they've been doing. Like, it's just like, Oh, Hawkeye, you know, meets this girl who got wrapped up in this mob stuff and he wants to just resolve it. And that's it really. Yeah. No, I, and and I think that (laughs) that actress who plays Kate Bishop, I I've said it every time we talk about it. I just think she's really, really good and really charming. And I, I, uh, you know, this, this thing of like, you're going to be the new me, Yelena's the new Black Widow, Kate's the new Hawkeye, this succession thing that they're having to do right now, I think could be really unsuccessful. And I think in some cases it's not the best, Uh, but, uh, but with her, it's like, great. She's awesome. You know? Yeah. She's awesome. And, and I don't feel like they really even sunset Clint, you know, he's more of still her partner, uh, you know, at the end and he, you know, brings her into his family. So it's, it's, it's. It's it's a great it's a great story, a great arc. That's the um, key is I need for the char- uh, first of all it would be nice if not every legacy character died. Like if they could at least <laughs> just not die. Um and then two 
if the su- successive character reveres that person and respects them and loves them, that's, I, I don't want them being like, uh, we're going to do it better than them or something, you know, or I'm, I, I, yeah. th- that kind of arrogance I don't want. Um, yeah. And, and I, I feel like they pull it off pretty well here. And I, I, I like that it's set around Christmas and they do a lot of Christmassy things around it. Rockefeller Center. And now, the, all look, that. the Christmas it's, thing, it, when we saw the trailer, we were like, oh, mwah. G- g- give it <laughs> give it to me hard cuz we just yeah g- give me a new season of hawkeye every christmas yeah, i'll take yeah. it and then they did it they i feel like they kept the promise you know they could they could have went they could, it could have been like oh it wasn't very christmasy but no they were like no he's going to fall into the the times square tree and shit <laughs> like <laughs> it's going to be really christmasy <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be really Christmas Day and yeah, and he makes it home for Christmas and um and he has a big green egg in his porch that's a smoker, Kamado. So I know he <laughs> canonically he must watch EJ Cooks in the MCU. So I um <laughs> Yeah, and it's cool, like the platonic partnership because he had a platonic partnership with Natasha. He's got a platonic partnership with her. He's obviously I, I've always liked his relationship to his wife or his wife is just kind of in on everything and kind of accepts the reality that they have to live. I think that's like a really unique take. Uh, almost always you would have had the wife being like, uh, please don't die. You know, constantly. Yeah. Or, or just being like a, a super like, you know, see you next Tuesday. Yeah. And it's just like, you're just like, Oh no. It, 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 like, it's just annoying. It's annoying plot mechanic. I do have, I, I have made... one thing they could have done to improve it just slightly. How about when he sees her at the end of the show, Linda, because we never see them in the same space uh, the whole show. Uh, how about a big old kiss on the lips? You know what they do? They hug like they're brother and sister. <laughs> like, this... well, I mean, that's that's a problem I feel with like a lot of yeah. the MCU stuff. It's It feels a little like Sexless. people in, yeah, interacting like brother and sister. <laughs> it, just, and it, it would help a little bit because... I don't think any of us are are worried that you know he's going to fall in love with Kate or something and leave his wife is not non superhero wife although maybe she becomes some kind of superhero um, based on that weird watch moment but the point is like it would be nice to be like no 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 these two are still very romantic this is where the sexuality is is between these two um, yeah dude, they have on Full House kids. they used to have people uh, <laughs> they used to have people open mouth kissing all the time. Nobody ever ever kisses anymore. It's a strange thing. Yeah. Well, the the sexiest scene was between uh, her, her, Eleanor Bishop and uh, mm. the uh, swordsman. Yeah, Lalo. There. Lalo. <laughs> Lalo does this thing the whole show where he um, he's got that big bushy mustache, and every time you think that he's gonna he's gonna be evil, he he flashes a big mustache smile. <laughs> he's like, "Why don't you come over here for dinner?" <laughs> I, I what well, I I love the turn of his character cuz uh you know he's 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 played very sinisterly the whole time but he's just like a weirdo. <laughs> he just wants to have sword fights. At the end. <laughs> yeah, he's just a sexy swordsman. <laughs> um yeah, I love it. I I love, I love it. that actor and I can't wait to see him in the final uh season of uh, Better Call Saul. But um so. Yelena so this is Marvel doing what Marvel does best. If you didn't really care that much about the last thing, it cannibalizes what did work and it repurposes it and pushes it forward. Don't forget, man, Thor is one of their best assets. Chris Hemsworth as Thor is is inspired as hell and an incredible thing on cinema. And they've made two movies that were really shite. And mm. hell, I didn't, you know, a lot of people like Captain America 1. I didn't. But Captain America went on to be an incredible character. They like, this is what they do is they, they don't let a dud. I'm not saying a black widow is a dud. They don't let a mediocre film or a film that doesn't really stay with you go to waste. You know, eventually they'll do something with, uh, uh, the iron, whatever, you know, her dad there. Um, N- Natasha's dad, the, the Soviet. Guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. They'll do something with him. You know, they never let anything go to waste. And, um, that's, that's, and Yelena was probably now, you know, I thought she was pretty funny in Black Widow and 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 also powerful in some of this, you know, in the American Pie scene and stuff. And and yeah, they. I think when she and Clint come to terms over 
what they're dealing with with Natasha, it's like it actually is really powerful because we've seen them in separate spaces and separate movies, but dealing with something similar. And it's not like it's it's not like it's bullshit either. It's not like they contrived it. It's like, no, we really we saw that scene in Endgame, you know? Yeah, it, 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 everything was dealt great. Um, ah. This was for me, this was the best uh, Marvel series so far because it was consistent. Yeah. And I, I like Hawkeye. And I like that story of, you know, Kate seeing Hawkeye and being inspired because like, oh, he doesn't have superpowers and I, I can be that. I can be that. I just need to be like brave and I need to actually try to attain it myself. Well, that scene, and, that scene where she, she basically like, you know, gives him his purpose speech, um, was, I mean, it was really well performed for one thing. I, I, I loved how underplayed she, she she played it and, and sincere she played it. And he had to listen. That was interesting. They didn't bring his deafness back into it. That didn't kind of like pay off. Like, I don't know what you would do with it exactly, but it was a major theme of the show. And then it kind of didn't even get brought up in the final episode. This is a little weird. Oh, yeah. Especially with uh, Maya. Maya but, yeah. um, I don't know. I didn't really give a it, fuck it, about Maya. I'll be honest. That's like probably an area that I'm like, you could have lopped that right off the show, and I would have been absolutely fine. Don't with don't worry, Frankie. They'll bring it back, <laughs> and you'll be like, I love Maya. I'll be like, I'm so close. this all began in Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. It's true because they know they, that you can't go back and rewatch 50 movies. You'll only remember <laughs> the best parts, like life itself. Yes. Yes. I mean, how many of these movies no. have you actually re like, you know, Civil War is one of their best films. I've only rewatched it one time and only recently. Yeah. And I almost forgot about yeah, it entirely. Yeah. You know, I, I rewatched Civil War. I rewatched like basically the, the best ones like Civil War and the Infinity Saga. You know, Ragnarok. I've probably seen Ragnarok like five or six times. That's a great movie. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I've only seen that one. That, once. That's excellent. That's really good. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.